What's up everybody? It's your boy Jobbers and Goons. Sorry if you hear like crickets in the background. I'm outside recording because it's nice and breezy outside and I want to record this video. I think it is an awesome topic to go ahead and cover because it's about that time for me to speak on it. Now, my boy Chuck actually made a video on this topic, Goku vs. Daitama, recently dropped. And it's, go ahead and go check him out after this. That's my boy. Uh, he's a member of the coffee shop. And uh, this is going to be my take on who in particular would win. This is assuming both at peak. Obviously, Goku mastered Ultra Instinct and everywhere he would scale with that, as well as Saitama scaling to his peak as shown uh, currently up to date in the webtoon and manga. If you guys are a fan of content like this, make sure to smash the like button. I took a break recently reconsidering my YouTube dreams, but we're back full swing. So if you want to purchase a video, to see your favorite topic or character on this channel or my second channel, The Coffee Shop, make sure to hit me up on Discord. I am going to start doing purchased videos every other day. So they will be out fast and rapidly, uh, starting at least bare minimum by the end of the week. So hop on. Uh, we have a really good deal going where it's a video package, which is three videos, is only 50 bucks. So definitely hit me up if you want that ASAP and to get your videos on soon. As well as I do giveaways. Just gave away an Xbox Series S. Uh, if you want to be eligible for a giveaway, join the Discord server. Um, and that will give you a good chance of being picked. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to cover Goku, then Saitama. Explain where they scale, how strong they are, what they bring to the table. And then I will tell you who I think wins. I hope you guys enjoy. Without further ado, let's begin. My other who would wins were a little more complicated, but this one I think is going to be more determined by like how you've used the characters and where they scale. So we're going to mostly talk about that for each. Now first, let's talk about Goku. Goku obviously being a Saiyan, uh, main character from Dragon Ball, including through Dragon Ball Super. One of the strongest characters we've ever seen in anime or manga. Goku, for power level, we're going to go like... His high bald stuff, or in my opinion, the higher way to interpret. So, for this, we know that in the Battle of Gods uh, epic saga, Goku and Beerus' collective force of their class was threatening to destroy the macrocosm. The reason this is impressive the macrocosm consists of realms or layers to it that are beyond time and space. The reason we know this is there are several statements. In quotes, uh, demonstrating that the Kai's worlds, or the worlds beyond, are outside of the dimension of the mortal universe, to the extent that they cannot be perceived by the universe. Uh, considering the universe can house pocket dimensions of time and space, it's referred to as infinite in nature, and consisting of time and space, uh, we're going to go ahead and assume it's 4D, infinite 4D, in that... The layers that transcend would be 5D. So we have potentially 5th dimensional plus construct right there. Casually being threatened to be destroyed by the clash from Goku versus Beerus. Okay, so we got 5D, 5D plus scaling right there for Goku. Uh, putting him at complex multiversal. From this point, Goku absorbs this stupid amount of power into his base gets multiple times stronger after this through Zenkai's and eventually unlocks Master or Ultra Instinct. We'll go over Ultra Instinct first. This allowed him to contend with a character that could shake the infinite realm of Void, which you could also say helps solidify the 5D, 5D plus argument. Uh, with this unquantified uh, amp to his power, he was able to somewhat contend Sorry, had a hairball, you know the vibes. Uh, he was somewhat able to contend with Jiren, who, like I said, is was like slapping him before. So he did get, obviously, several times stronger. Eventually, he would go on to obtain Mastered Ultra Instinct. Another perk of this, besides he was obviously stronger or more focused in power, is that you can almost like auto dodge it's a battle instinct where he doesn't have to think to dodge he just does um and eventually he is able to for a little bit go toe-to-toe -to -toe with jiren 
Uh, same Jiren, who is stated to be a threat uh, far beyond anything seen before, which would include infinite Zamasu, whose power could be felt from another timeline. Um, Jiren was like the big dog. Goku eventually scales to that, if not above. Um, so, in the end, through the power scaling and the calc stacking and all that, you could put Goku at 5D+, plus with Mastered Ultra Instinct, uh, putting him in potentially the complex multiversal uh, range and making him very formidable with power. In terms of hacks, he can uh, auto-dodge, he has key blast, key manipulation... Uh, if he scales above something in raw power, he and his kind have demonstrated they can just overpower the hacks through raw power alone. For example, even though um, like Vegeta at one point got turned into candy, uh, he still fought back. Uh, in terms of Soul Erasure, he does have Hakai, which he demonstrated he could uh, use. Um, this erases you physically and your soul if you have no defense against it. Uh... Like I said, his hacks resistances go up to the point of his own AP and power. He has the power of Zenkai, where if you beat him to near death but he doesn't die, he will get stronger after. He's a master of martial arts um, and a very instinctual fighter, uh, having very much experience under his belt. As a fighter, uh, considering even early on in Dragon Ball, the Kai said Goku was like far more advanced than people that could like practice for billions of years. So he is a monster in that uh, category as well. So overall, Goku is a complex multiversal uh, tier threat with uh, insane martial arts, uh, key manipulation, soul erasure, and uh, various other techniques and hacks that can help him get the win. But on the other side, we got to talk about the caped baldy. Saitama. Now, this used to be a joke of an argument, right? Like, if you brought up Saitama versus Goku, you would get shit on because they're like, dude, Saitama hasn't shown anything yet. Too crazy. He fought Boros. Like, big fucking deal. Boros blew up a star at, at Highball. Who gives a fuck? They did that in early Dragon Ball, right? It was a crazy debate. But the author for One Punch Man has absolutely been on one in uh, recent editions. So... It's now become a really good topic of conversation, so let's go over what Saitama brings to the table. Saitama being a character that some would consider a gag character, he is someone who decided he wanted to become a hero, he was leading a boring life, underwent a pretty decent physical routine, and after a little bit of training, lost his hair and became the unbeatable One Punch Man, the ultimate hero. As a member of the Hero Society, Saitama faces threats to both his town, city, country, and even the world and existence itself as he battles to find someone strong enough to give him a good fight. Now, in terms of how strong Saitama is, we need to talk about his more recent stuff because that's the scaling that really matters for uh, comparing to a monster like Goku. So, to start off, we got to talk about what Saitama does before even running into Cosmic Fear Garu, right? Saitama, at one point, had an insane feat where he casually broke through an infinite time space beyond our plane of existence. So, beyond regular space time, so 4D, it would be beyond that, so 5D. It was actually called spiritual in nature and is implied to be abstract or beyond the physical completely which would be an insane uh complication to the scaling so we're kind of going to low ball it and say it's just 5d on accident just knocking saitama casually broke through here no difficulty putting his ap at breaking through such a realm uh casually at 5d um 5d plus even considering it literally was just a simple knock he then goes on to face Cosmic Garu, right? And it's important to kind of establish how insanely OP uh, Cosmic Fear Garu is. For example, he casually slapped around an infinite uh, dimension cannon and called it uh, lame. Like, you literally see when the powers used, the uh, infinite sign get formed and it's a dimension cannon. 
And Garu slaps it, like, laughs at dodging it, and calls it lame in comparison to his power. Like, it's just an absolute joke compared to him. It's then, multiple times throughout the manga, confirmed that Garu has the divine transcendental power uh, of God, and that he's being controlled by God himself. God, obviously, transcending time and space, uh, and being a character who can literally just casually fuck with reality whenever he wants. He's, he just literally transcends it. Um, Garu, being an instrument of this, is on his way to becoming absolute um, evil. This Garu is able to casually throw around hyperspace uh, gates. Hyperspace gates have to be above at least the third dimension, so they'd be 4 to 5D. However, considering he's using transcendental power and they're supposed to be transcendental to... Um, that realm, he probably should be slapped around 5D hyperspace gates, but we can load ball to 4D. They're absolutely nothing to Saitama, who isn't even nearly as strong as he gets later. But this Saitama slaps him around. They're also in a different translation called subspace. That could potentially even scale it higher as subspace has ties to six dimensional um, scaling and uh physics so if it would put them at 60 at that point that'd be even crazier but willow ball to 4d 5d uh hyperspaces and considering the breaking through the plane of existence we explained before that shouldn't be a surprise we also see saitama is not even at full power against this garu he's literally saying yo i'll use one hand i'm gonna embarrass the fuck out of you like you don't scale to me at all dumb bitch he then, Garu, after witnessing the insane power of Saitama, uh, states that Saitama is literally strong enough to instantly copy the power of God himself and casually control it because he's way above that power. Like, it, there's no way it can impact him and take him over because of how strong Saitama inherently is. Saitama then copies garu's infinite martial arts and this allows him to move his own atoms so fast that time becomes irrelevant to him that's right he looks around at time and space like a toy at that point and is like oh shit i can do what i want here martial arts are amazing this form of martial arts is supposed to be like transcendental and of course uh in context of what's going on and the scaling we've established this makes a lot of sense we see at this point, Saitama was able to reverse causality or hit you without ever throwing a punch. How it's explained in the manga is that he was so supercharged, so powered up because of the emotions he was experiencing and his raw power as a hero, that he hit Garu with a punch that was never thrown. That literally breaks logic. That's beyond the laws of uh, physics. That's beyond, like, all laws that govern logic, reality, all that. You can't hit somebody if you never threw something, right? But yet he can hit you without ever throwing a punch. No causality, and it's explained as absolutely unavoidable. Saitama is so stupidly strong at this point. He literally, to get across the universe, farts. And is instantly across the universe. That's stupid. Like, it's just insane how strong he's gotten. He's even surpassed... The um, power and comprehension and infinite copy technique of Garu, who, like I said, can copy powers uh, infinitely, had the transcendental power of God. Um, this should transcend, like I said, the infinite plane existence of existence beyond time and space um, that was demonstrated before Saitama had broken through. It should transcend that. And... That would be the ultimate bare minimum, so at least 5, 6 D scaling at that point, which Saitama, according to Garu, had just completely left that tier of power behind. So transcend that as well. Um, and no one existed that could uh, even begin to comprehend that level of power. And the fact he can't, Gar Garu can't comprehend him would put 6, 7 D Saitama. Um, but then we get even more. It, it's, it's just getting ridiculous. Hit the like button for how insane the scaling of both Goku and Saitama are at this point. Now, Garu explains what occurred based on multiversal forms of theory. 
countless universes, multiverses, and layers of existence. The multiversal string theory uh, suggests there's actually 10 dimensional existence. There's 10 dimensions in existence, okay? So this puts it at 10D. He states Saitama had surpassed all of this. He surpassed the multiversal string theory, which would bare minimum put him at 11D. He is also stated to not be bound by physical laws. And because of his role as a hero, he will transcend whenever in order to win, including completely transcending time and space. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant to him. Whatever he needs to do to win, that's the power Saitama will reach because that's who he is. Um, his power, like I said, was confirmed to massively transcend Cosmic Garu. He literally outgrew an infinite um, growth ability, which is absolutely insane. Like, he transcended even that. That's crazy. It also heavily implies, um, in this later, in this latest chapter, an observation of Saitama's power at that point, that all these theories, all these suggestions of how strong he is by other characters, are actually lowballs. It states his power had reached such an extreme point due to the emotions that no one could detect his true power. So even with them suggesting this power level for Saitama based on what they've experienced and seen, they haven't experienced his actual true power. He's beyond all that, which should put him way beyond even the suggestion that he transcends multiversal string theory and is a-causal, which is crazy. But anyways... We've gotten the insane scaling of both characters out of the way. Who do I think wins if these two clash? Now, as you guys can kind of tell, at this point, if you're paying attention to the scans and evidence for both sides, Saitama at this point, due to the extreme scaling taken in recent storytelling from the author, including, you know, 160 through 169, uh, it's, it's gotten absurd out of hand. Um, and this should be no surprise because Saitama's meant to be an extreme character. And I believe if you look at both uh, sides of evidence, obviously peak Saitama outscales Goku blatantly at this point. Goku has no evidence suggesting he can dodge a punch that was never thrown or reverse causality in the Saitama verse. Um, he has no answer for that. Now, for people that say he forgot he did that so he can't do that, that's stupid. It literally says that this was his power that massively transcended even using the power of God. His own power. He was fast enough to instantly copy the countless martial arts of Garu that included the power of God, which allows you to be or use reverse causality. It literally says he was moving that fast. He was moving his atoms so that fast. And that if he needs to do that again... If he needs to reach that tier of power, he casually will do so because of how strong he is in his role as the hero. So it's literally established, yes, that is his power. That's how strong he is. He could do that shit again. So in the end, I think at this point, Saitama has officially outgrown Goku. He's continuing to grow. He might get even stronger. We don't know yet. But if Goku gets stronger, we can revisit this topic. I just think it's interesting because Goku used to slam Saitama. I mean, we had to put Saitama against lower versions of Goku. But now the scaling's just gotten so extreme, Saitama actually is big dog now. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I expect nothing but hate from Goku fans. Uh, I already got like semi-rated in my server by Goku fans, so no shock if it happens. It is what it is, always been a toxic community. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and for the majority of you, because obviously that's not a majority, including hopefully Goku fans, thank you so much for watching. I enjoyed researching and making this video. Shout out to Chuck, even though our videos disagree. Chuck agreed uh, when we talked that I'm probably right uh, in, what I, in, in my stance, so maybe me and him will collab on it and talk about it again. Who knows, but thank you guys so much for watching. It's been your boy Jivers and Goons. Stay on the lookout for new content, and again... Purchase videos will be done every other day, so they will get out super fast for those wondering. Thank you so much for watching. It's been your boy Jobbers and Goons, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.